All right, welcome back to Adobe Photoshop. And today we're just gonna have a little fun and create two little actions inside of Adobe Photoshop. The first action will be to create sort of a watercolor or a painting effect. And the second action will create what we call a duotone. So a duotone's really short. So it's just easier to add that here to the end of this video. So the first thing we'll need to do is create an action set. So we can go up here, open our actions, and you'll notice we've got this little folder right here. This is gonna create an action set, and we're gonna call this watercolor and duotone. And we'll hit okay. So there we got our watercolor and duotone. And now inside of that action, we're gonna create the actions themselves. So we're gonna hit plus to create one, and we're gonna call this one watercolor. It's going into the set function key and we'll just go ahead and make that blue and we'll hit record. And now anything that we do from this point on, it's going to record as a step in the action. So I'll have these actions available on my website. If you wanna go download them, they are completely free and you don't have to do any crazy stuff like subscribe to a newsletter or anything like that. It's just stuff that I'm gonna give you that's free if you would like it. So our first step is gonna go ahead and over here we've got our background layer. I'm just gonna hit Command or Control J depending on if you're a Mac or a PC and we're gonna duplicate that layer. And for today I'll just label this as watercolor so you know what it is and we'll hit return and bam, we're ready to go. So our first step is to go in the gray space and, and that's that gray space out here on the right next to the picture that we see in the layers panel. If you right click in that space, it will give you the option to convert to what we call a smart object. And you'll see how these smart objects differentiate themselves from traditional layers. They're gonna be very beneficial and they're going to allow you to adjust stuff after the fact. So let's start the effect. So let's go up here to filter and drop down to filter gallery. So the first thing that we wanna do is a dry brush. So we'll click on the dry brush and we're getting this effect on our image. We want our sliders to be at 10, 10, and one. Now look, you can play around with these and adjust these to get them to look however you want. Though I suggest for this action, you use the numbers that I have set because they do work pretty good. And what's cool is you'll see is you can actually go back in time and readjust these numbers after. So if you run the action, you wanna see what it looks like with adjusting these, it's really, really easy to do and you can save the image and come back and do it. You can just do it at any time. That's what's great about it. They are what we call non-destructive. We can also create all these different effects that we're gonna be here in this little section, but what happens is they combine them all into one effect. We don't wanna do that. So this is a little more time consuming, but it gives us more adjustability. So we're gonna hit okay. And you can see right here, we've got this filter gallery now with this smart filter. And the way these work is, if I double click on this, you'll notice it goes right back into the filter and I can readjust them. I'm gonna hit cancel because we're not going to do that. All right, so we're gonna go right back into filter gallery again. And we're gonna go up to cutout. For cutout, I have the numbers at six, zero, and one. So we'll slide this all the way over and we'll slide this most of the way over. So six, zero, one, and hit okay and that's gonna give us this first effect. However, it looks kinda wonky and I don't like it. So we're gonna go up here to this little symbol out here that we see, and this is on the top filter. So we're gonna go up here to the top last one we did, and we're gonna go to this little symbol right here and double click that, double left click that. And it's gonna launch this new little window that we get. We're gonna change this blending mode to pin light. And you'll see, bam, a much better effect and we're good to go. Next step, we're gonna use Smart Blur. So we're gonna go to Filter, Blur, Smart Blur. Now I've already got my settings. Basically, I'm trying to get this first one up here at 25 and this one around 50. Look, it's close enough. It, that little difference gonna make a difference, no. And then we want High and Normal. So we'll go ahead and hit OK. And we'll let this run. Look, Smart Blur and Surface Blur take quite a long time to run through. So uh, just give it a second to run. 
All right, so we've got our smart blur over here on the layers panel. Where once again, we're gonna double click on that little symbol. It's gonna bring us into the smart blur options. Now, some people use screen on this, I don't. I'm just gonna change my overall opacity to around 50%. So I had 52, that's close enough. But we've lowered that to half of what it originally was. So that's smart blur. Our next step is gonna to be to use find edges. And what that's gonna do, it's gonna give us a little like contour edge here. Sometimes I don't use these in this action. It really just depends. So it's easier to put it in the action because you can just click the eyeball and turn it off. So to get find edges, you go to filter, stylize, find edges. It gives you like a little contour, a little drawing of your edges. Obviously this looks horrible. So we're gonna come up here once again, double click on that. We get this, this time we're gonna change our blending option to soft light. Boom, just like that, works wonderful. All right, we're going to lower that cause I don't like it at 100%, once again to around 50% and hit okay. So we've got that little subtle contour edge into our image. And then lastly, we're gonna add one more filter. So we'll go to filter, filter gallery, we're gonna come down here to watercolor and in brush detail, we're gonna do one, shadow intensity, zero, texture, one. So just a subtle addition. So we're gonna hit okay. We're gonna go into that by double clicking that filter and we're gonna just lower this to somewhere around 50%, just like we did with the rest of them. So right here, we'll slide this down to about 50%. We're gonna hit okay. And the action is done. So we're gonna come up here, we're gonna stop that action. And to test the action, just to make sure it works, um, we'll go ahead and switch off button mode, slide down, there's the watercolor action. We'll go to another image and we're gonna hit this. Now look, this action takes quite a bit to run. So it's not gonna happen instantly um, because these smart filters and the smart blur take some time on a computer. So I'm gonna go ahead and click it and I'll probably run it through at a faster speed. And bam, just like that, our effect is done. Now, you could stop and stay here, but there's some little bonus tips or tricks I can give you to further add to your image. This really depends on the paper that you pick and the brushes that you select in the next steps. So what are those? Well, come on over here. You'll notice I have downloaded a paper and I will have this link in the low. This is just available, it's free. It is on Pixabay and it's a watercolor paper. However, you could do any paper that you wanted. You can either photograph papers or download paper textures, whatever you want. I will show you how this works. So we're gonna go ahead and grab our move tool. We'll go up, we're gonna just add this layer by holding shift, letting go, that's gonna put it in the center. Command T for transform, and I'm just gonna make this bigger. We can apply that, and bam, we've got this paper texture here. Now all we need to do is go up here to our blending modes and change our blending mode to multiply. And just like that, you've added that texture to that image. We could come on over to the town and do the same thing. So I can go to the paper, bring it up to the town, place it in the image, transform this paper, make it bigger. I'm just gonna do it a different, slower way so you can see what I'm doing. Um, I usually wouldn't stretch them that much, but that's okay for this video. Usually I might crop it and resize the paper instead. We're gonna change that to blending mode of multiply and boom, just like that, we've got the paper texture on this image as well. So we can come back here. The last step is to add a mask to your watercolor layer. So I'm just gonna come down here to the mask, click that button, add a white mask. Because it's white, nothing's really been done to it yet. So what we're gonna do is we are going to actually add a watercolor effect to this image by using watercolor brushes. Now brushes are over here. And if you're looking, you can see I've got a watercolor brush up here. We can go into our brushes and scroll down. You can see I've got watercolor brushes. You've got your general brushes that usually come. So these are all brushes. If you don't see any watercolor brushes that you have downloaded, Adobe has some that are free. What we can do is close this. We can go on over here to Google Chrome and you'll notice that in Adobe, and I'll have this link below, 
has free brushes that are available to anybody. You can download those. Brushes come with an extension of ABR. Usually all you have to do is double click that ABR file and it will load them into your brush files and then you'll have the ability to use them. Then when you go back to Photoshop, and I don't know if this is the same brush that's available in there, I'm not sure where these brushes are from. You take this brush, it's quite a large brush. And because we have white over here, we wanna paint the opposite color, which is black. And you can control your opacity and flow. And you can just come in here and click and give that watercolor effect. Now, one thing that I do, when I do use watercolor brushes, you'll see me use a couple different types of brushes. This one I wanna rotate. So it's better option. And then I can come in here and boom, I can add that watercolor effect to my image. And I could paint and do this anywhere. The more that you apply, the more of the effect you're gonna get. You can see it's right over here. This is exactly what it's gonna look like when I'm doing it. I didn't paint any down here, but I could easily add that to those locations as well. And if you screw it up, you can just erase it or undo it. Um, it's just a mess. So that's adding dimension to your watercolor image. All right, so that's action number one. The next one we're gonna go ahead and take a look at is what we call a duotone. And so let me open up my duotone image. All right, so to create a duotone, one of the first things that you're gonna want is a high contrast image. So the image in the front should be bright and the image in the back should be dark. In this case, we've got these horrible highlight values in this image. So we're gonna clone those out. Plus we've got this weird effect that is happening. So let's go ahead and crop that out. Go back to the two by three ratio that this was shot in and we'll just simply move this up a little bit and get rid of it. We'll apply that crop. Then I'm simply gonna just take the clone stamp tool because I know this is gonna look better if we just kind of remove this stuff. We'll just kind of clone it out. You could use the patch tool, anything you wanted really. We'll make this a little bit bigger. And we're just trying to remove these bright highlight areas. So we've got this layer fixed and clone looking good. So let's go ahead and start our action. So we can open up our actions. We can come down here and put plus. We're gonna put duotone and it's inside that set. We're gonna change this, not that. We're gonna change the color to orange. You could leave it at blue. It doesn't really make a difference and you can go back and change this at any time. We're gonna hit record. So now the important aspect is everything that we do from now on, it's going to record. We're gonna just run through the basic steps and then if we wanna alter something, we can always go back into it and alter it from there. So our first step is gonna to be to turn this into a black and white image. And so we're gonna hit the black and white adjustment and we can adjust this. Remember, you want this to be really bright. Um, it doesn't matter actually if it loses a little detail, that can actually be a good thing. So we're trying to make that black and white. But this is still in RGB, so the RGB mode is up here. You can see it's still red, green, and blue. We wanna convert that to grayscale. Because if we don't convert it to grayscale, uh, we're never going to be able to pick the duo tone. So now we're in, so now we're in uh, grayscales. We can see up here. Actually, it was this image, but that's okay. So now we're in grayscale. When we did that, it kind of shifted to this and made it a little bit dark. But it will screw the action up if we do it. So our next step is to now go to image mode, duo tone, and this is going to give us the duo tone color. So you can pick any color that you want. You would just come in here and select this. If you wanted more of a sepia, drag down here, you're gonna get that color. If you wanted more of a cyanotype color, you could come in here and pick a brighter color like that. In this case, I'm just gonna hit cancel. We're gonna leave this color here. I will show you how you can do something so you can adjust this easily. So we'll go ahead and hit okay. Now, this is the problem. When you are Working with duo tones, they look good on the screen and they're easy to create, but once you try to print them or use them on the web, it doesn't work right. So it's easier to convert this back to RGB at this point. Once you've done the effect, go back to RGB, okay? Now, that's that's the end of the basic action. Could we, end, could we add the next part that we're gonna do to this? Yes, but I'm gonna stop the action here 
because I like to make it so we can change it. So go in here, we'll hit stop, that will stop that action, and we're good to go. So the next part of this action is we are going to add a texture to this action. Actually, let me show you how to change the action first. So let's go into our action and let's go down here. And I think it's this convert mode two. If you click all this little box in here, this is what we call a stop. It will insert a stop into the action. And what this will allow you to do, and you can do this at any time, you can turn it on, you can turn it off. Let's go ahead and go back in some time to before we created the action, which is right here. We'll go to the action now, because we've inserted that stop, and I'll hit play, and it stops on this. So it will allow us to change that color if we wanted. If we don't have the stop, we'll go back in time. So now we're back in time. If we wanna run that action again, we can just go ahead and hit play. And you can see this time it just ran through and it didn't stop. So on this second convert to mode, if you add the stop, it will stop at that point and allow you to change that color if that's something that you want. It's not something that we want, so let's move on. Now in our last image, we added that water paper texture and you could add the water paper texture to this if you wanted. You can also add textures. Now I have a texture image and it's, it's an aggressive texture image. And the reason it is, is because I want you to see it so you know what's going on. Let's move it. So we'll just move it on up to the Lotus. And just like we did before, we're gonna change that blending mode to multiply. Now right now it's in color and you can leave it in color if you like that. We're gonna lower the opacity because it's a little too strong. If you want this to be black and white, you can create what we call a black and white clipping mask. You'll click on, what you'll do is you come here to the adjustments, click on the black and white adjustment, and notice that it made the whole image black and white. Don't worry, we're gonna fix that. So right down here in your properties, you have this little thing, and this is the clipping mask. You click it, and what that little arrow says is, hey, just turn this layer black and white and leave the others as is. So now the texture is black and white and it's integrated. And you can do multiple ones of these. You can add dust and scratches or anything that you would want to add to add some other texture to this duotone. Well, that is it for this tutorial on turning an image into a painting or watercolor and how to create a duotone. If you found this video helpful, it would be great if you could give us a thumbs up. If you have any comments or questions, you can always leave those below and don't forget to subscribe.